Okay, so this is game four of the in the opponent's eyes, the opponent's perspective. In this game here, the key points are there's two key points, all basically to do with um, the capturing and then the ending result of the position of that capture. So we'll take you through the game. So the opening's not too bad. Just blocking off the um, potential attacks and the key squares, the key pieces. So the opponent's opening very tentative. In their eyes, they're always going for the b-pawn. So we're looking for the exchange, simple as simple as the simple does, and we just get the big gun off the board. So we bring the bishop through, attacking, x-raying through to the king. And then they bring the knight across. I did think that was a little bit of a weird move. In my head, I'm thinking, eh, what was it? But it's obviously just stopping the bishop from having the x-ray through. It's at this moment here where I did think to myself, well, okay, we could just keep the tension here. But I know they're very good with the knights. So do I let their knight escape? Or... Have we got a double whammy with the bishop anyway? Because if the knight does move, we still got the x-ray through to the king. Should I just go and castle? Just go and castle, king safety. Get the other knight out. Yeah, which probably makes sense. Develop more pieces. Because I've not got a piece under threat. It's not under threat in any way. But I'm not fully developed. So really, probably bringing the knight out. Just to get that developed because the king isn't under any kind of immediate threats at the minute. Could have hung fire, I think, on actually taking the knight. I think that probably was the mistake. So in my opponent's eyes, they're going to be comfortable because they've got a cluster of pawns towards the centre of the board. So we did take, so it does show that it's a drop. So really, I think hindsight, just probably just develop the piece, nice and simple, basic stuff, rather than rushing and taking and giving them more pawns towards the center. Okay, so that was the first instance. So we push the pawn up now, just really kind of looking to prevent the bishop coming through here once this pawn either does this or takes whichever way around. Also, maybe stopping the knight if it's looking to try and come around somehow. But in any event, it could feel like a non-move, but at the same token, he does have this rook here looking to bear down on the pawn as well. And I'm thinking if they do get castled, they're going to, because this is the half-open file, they'll be getting their rooks facing down onto here. So they bring the bishop out and again we're attacking but we haven't got the other knight out. You know, we haven't got the other knight out, we haven't got castle but there's no threats on our king at the minute and so that might have been a little bit previous, probably could have hung fire a little bit on that. I was just trying to give them things to think about because they're trying to get castled, so I'm thinking if we can slow the process down for them getting castled. But all the while, their main focal point will be on this weak pawn here. So maybe we could have just pushed the h5 a little bit, and maybe get this pawn here supporting, uh, to have, have add a little bit of defence towards this pawn, because they do have the power base of the half-open file looking forward tense. And based on the movements of the opponents they were looking forward tense in tense of in sense of the rook coming here and doubling up on this area and putting pressure on this pawn so probably a different way of thinking and just slow down the attacking process and look a little bit more about improving position on the board so we went and attacked the knight they grabbed and we grabbed okay so next next case in point we're just continuing attacking yeah, this knight's not out. Um, we're not feeling that it's too bad, you know. We're, we're attacking, we're giving them things to think about, but we're really not improving our position on the board. That's, that is a key thing. Uh, as you can see, the opponent is just kind of sitting, waiting, and waiting to get castled, 
waiting to just push to put the pressure on here so it was like a long-term strategy that they had in terms of gameplay whereas i'm dancing around the board trying to snap pieces up so they push the pawn down and we castle king safety so not feeling as comfortable as i need to be because obviously the knight is not out um in my in back of my head i'm still thinking well they're going to be attacking here but do we have enough pieces protecting probably not this bishop is looking pretty awesome so they castle so at this point here we could be moving we could be moving pawns up either to try and attack the bishop obviously it's going to keep that diagonal or it takes the knight off the board but key thing for us is really we should be developing our pieces probably trying to get the knight out a little bit it's still slowing the process down our bishop is in the middle and i know for a fact when i was thinking of the maneuver with the bishop i forgot that the bishop was protecting this pawn yeah so i had this idea of coming here coming around and then being able to snap this pawn up for free and then light dawned on marble head then i saw the bishop and i'm like thinking oh that's kind of not good so hanging back on doing the attacks and looking where the pieces are going to land um really would help in this situation we would have probably developed a bit more pieces and supported this pawn from any potential attacks um, coming on the half open file. So we brought the bishop down thinking we're getting this um, situation um, all sewn up, but they capture and we capture. And at this point here, they push down. So I'm still feeling it's, it's manageable, but really my pieces are definitely not working together. So we're not really that happy with the position. It's manageable, but this bishop is looking powerful. And then I'm feeling the pressure of pressure of the pawns coming here because this is obviously going to be attacking this pawn. So how do we deal with that? So I'm a little bit too late to the party, really. Bring the knight up. And then the rook attacks the bishop, but really it's looking to get doubled up here, putting pressure on here so the pawn can come here. So we bring the bishop through attacking and then we capture. So that's pretty straightforward stuff. And as we see straight just attacking the pawn here waiting to take here so we'll have to kind of resign ourselves to the fact that we're going to be a pawn down in that situation if we're not already down one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven yeah so we'll be a pawn down so made a move thinking somehow is my rook going to get here to help support but really it's not because the pawn is just going to drop here and the rook's not going to get there. And it was like wasted moves. So there is f5 pushing onto the pawn to give them something to think about. Resigning ourselves to the fact that they are going to push. Yep. So it's re resigning ourselves to the fact that yes, that's going to be taken. But if, see how the rook is on the bishop. The bishop's got no protection. So if we did push here, and if they carried on with their movement, say they, say they wanted to carry on, yeah, yeah, then we could take and we're on the bishop. So smallest of details, not saying that that would happen that way because they could take, then we could take with the rook and we're still on the bishop, giving them something to kind of think about. Then the rook's kind of managing this square for a bit, but it's not going to stay there too long, obviously, because the pawn will come and hit it. But it needs to move the bishop first. Does it move here or it can move anywhere it wants to move? So that type of maneuver would have been better. So thinking more outside the box in terms of not tunneling my vision on this one area and trying to think of trying to come and support here when we've got like a nice simple combination of movements that gives the opponent something to think about so they pushed down we brought the knight down and we knew the knight was going to be taken and basically we created our own little net for ourselves and we put ourselves in this little net so the rook's coming down and we're attacking the rook looking to see whether a knight takes if they did take, can take here. It's like a drawish type thing, can come up and defend. But at least it's 
fairly even on that score. But it's not the best. But they didn't. They just brought their rook up. And at this point here, I was deliberating about, oh, well, do we put a check on? But then he just brings his king in here. And if we keep putting checks on, it's getting closer and closer. Or do we bring the rook back? Hmm. Or, even better. So they've gone there. If we did this. Now, if he takes, then obviously we take the rook. If he, what did I say? Um, if he takes, then we can take with the pawn. Yeah, that would have been better. The rook coming across. The rook coming across. Simple doubling of the rooks. That would have worked for us. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Tasty. So yeah, it's taking that moment just to find the better, better moves. The better moves than the move that you're thinking of. It might look daunting because, you know, they're plus one and it looks like they've got, you know, the center pawns controlling the center. But it's going to take a, a bit of work for them to materialize that gain. And all we needed to do was bring this rook here rather than to capture him. We had a sense in our bones that capturing was not the best because we're going to be playing defense nanny. So I think when we feel that gut instinct that it doesn't feel right, we have to find that better move. Because if we go with that, it doesn't feel right move. We're just basically resigning ourselves to losing the game or gain, getting disadvantages in the game. 